The consumption of foods rich in the animal protein and other nutrients has risen of late, with demand growing faster than production. The National Mission for Protein uh, Supplements is being launched in 2011-12 with an allocation of rupees 300 crore. It will take up activities to promote animal-based protein production through livestock development, dairy farming, piggery, goat rearing, fisheries in selected blocks. Adequate availability of fodder is essential for sustained production of milk. It is necessary to accelerate the production of fodder through intensive promotion of technologies to ensure the availability through the, throughout the year. I propose to provide 300 crore for accelerated fodder development program which will benefit farmers in 25,000 villages. Honorable members may be curious as to why all these new initiatives are being launched with an allocation of rupees 300 crore. Well, the number three may be lucky to me. <coughs> Madam Speaker, <coughs> while, the, while the need to while the need to maximize crop yields to meet the growing demand for food grains is critical, we have to sustain agricultural productivity in long term. There has been deterioration in soil health due to removal of crop residues and indiscriminate use of the chemical fertilizers aided by distorted prices. <coughs> to address these issues, government proposes to promote organic farming methods, <coughs> combining modern technology with traditional farming practices like green manuring, biological pest control, and weed management. To get the best from their land, farmers need access to affordable credit. Banks have been consistently meeting the targets set for the agricultural credit flow in the past few years. For the year 2011-12, I am raising the target of the credit flow to the farmers from 3,75,000 crores to 4,75,000 crores. Banks have been asked to step up direct lending for the agriculture and credit to small and marginal farmers. The, the, existing, the existing interest subvention, there is more. The existing interest subvention scheme of providing short-term crop loan to farmers at 7% interest will be continued during 2011-12. In the last budget, I had provided an additional 2% interest subvention to those farmers who repay their crop loan on time. The response to this scheme has been very good. In order to provide further incentive to these farmers, I propose to enhance the additional subvention to 3% in 2011-12. Thus, the effective rate of interest for such farmers would be 4%. <coughs> in view of the enhanced target for the flow of agricultural credit, I propose to strengthen NABARD capital base by infusing rupees 3,000 crore in a phased manner as government equity. This would raise its paid up capital to 5,000 crore to enable NABAR to finance the short-term crop loans of the cooperative credit institutions and RRBs at concessional rates. I propose a contribution of 10,000 crore to NABAR's short-term rural credit fund for 2011-12 from the shortfall in the priority sector lending by scheduled commercial banks. Despite growing production of vegetables and fruits, their availability is inadequate due to bottlenecks and in retailing capacity. An estimated 40% of the fruit and vegetable production in India goes west due to lack of storage, cold chain, and transport infrastructure. To address these issues, 11th plan target for the number of mega food parks was set at 30. So far, 15 such parks have been sanctioned during 2011-12 Approval is being given to set up 15 more mega food parks. The year 2008 to 2010 saw very high levels of food grain procurement. On January 1, 2011, the food grain stock in the central pool 
reached 470 lakh metric tons, 2.7 times higher than 174 lakh metric tons on January 1, 2007. This storage capacity for such large quantities requires augmentation. Process to create new storage capacity of 150 lakh metric ton through private entrepreneurs and warehousing corporations has been fast-tracked. Decision to create 20 lakh metric tons of storage capacity under public entrepreneur guarantee scheme through the modern silos has been taken. While we will be able to add about 2.6 lakh tons of capacity by March this year, based on existing sanctions, the additional will reach 40 lakh tons by March 2012. During 2010-11, another 25 lakh metric tons of storage capacity has been created under the rural go-down scheme. Investment in the cold storage project is now gaining momentum. During this year, 24 cold storage projects with a capacity of 1.4 lakh metric tons have been sanctioned under National Horticulture Mission. In addition, 107 cold storage projects with a capacity of over 5, 5 lakh metric tons have been approved by the National Horticulture Board. To attract investment in this sector, henceforth capital investment in creation of the modern storage capacity will be eligible for viability gap funding scheme of the finance ministry. It was not earlier. It is also proposed to recognize cold chains and post harvest storage as an infrastructure subsector. The recent episode of inflation in vegetables and fruits has exposed serious flaws <coughs> in our supply chains. The government regulated mandates sometimes prevent retailers from integrating their enterprises with the farmers. There is need for the state governments to review and enforce a ref reform. Agricultural Produce Marketing Act urgently. <clears throat> infrastructure and industry. Madam Speaker, infrastructure is critical for our development. In 2011-12, an allocation of over rupees 2 lakh 14,000 crore is being made for this sector, which is 23.3% higher than current year. This amounts 48.5% of the gross budgetary support to plan expenditure. Our experience with PPP model for creation of public sector assets in the country has been good. We have recently launched the National Capacity Building Program to enhance the capacities of the public functionaries in identifying, conceptualizing, structuring, and managing PPPs. It is our endeavor to come up with a comprehensive policy that can be used by central and the state governments in further developing public-private partnership. Government established India Infrastructure Finance Corporation to provide long-term financial assistance to infrastructure projects. It is expected to achieve a cumulative disbursement target of 20,000 crores of rupees by March 31, 2011, 25,000 crores of rupees by March 31, 2012. The takeout financing scheme announced in the budget of 2019 has been implemented and seven projects have been sanctioned with a date of rupees 1,500 crore. Another 5,000 crore will be sanctioned during 2011-12. In order to give a boost to infrastructure development in railways, ports, housing, and highway development, I propose to allow tax-free bonds of rupees 30,000 crore to be used by various government undertakings in the year 2011-12. This includes Indian Railway Finance Corporation, 10,000 crore, National Highway Authority of India, 10,000 crores, Hardco, rupees 5,000 crores, and <coughs> Ports, rupees 5,000 crores. To attract foreign funds for the infrastructure financing, I propose to create special vehicle in the form of notified infrastructure debt funds. I will come to the details in part B of my speech. For sustained growth of GDP and productive employment for younger generation, it is imperative that the growth in manufacturing sector picks up. We expect to take the share of manufacturing in GDP from about 16% to 25% over a period of next 10 years. Government will come out with a manufacturing policy which will bring down the compliance burden on the industry through self-regulation and help make Indian industry globally competitive. 
to address the need for the greater transparency and accountability in procurement policy and allocation, pricing and utilization of the natural resources, the government has set up two committees. The recommendations will be available <coughs> within three months. A group of ministers has been set up to consider <coughs> all issues relating to reconciliation of environmental concerns emanating from various departmental activities, including those related to infrastructure and mining. This group will also suggest changes in the existing statute, rules, regulations, and guidelines, and make, the rec make its recommendations in a time-bound manner. The Indian automobile market is the second fastest growing in the world and has soared nearly 30% growth this year. World over, substantial investments are being made in the field of hybrid and electric mobility to provide green and clean transportation for the masses. National mission for hybrid and electric vehicles will be launched in collaboration with all stakeholders. <coughs> the funding of 15,260 modern low-floor and semi-low-floor buses under JNNURM, besides adding to passengers' comfort, has transformed the urban transport across India. In 2011-12, Delhi Metro Phase 3, Mumbai Metro Phase Line 2, 3 are proposed to be taken up. Ongoing metro projects of uh, Bengaluru, Kolkata, and Chennai will be provided financial assistance to speed implementation. Investment in fertilizer sector is capital intensive and is considered high risk. It is proposed to include, include capital investment in fertilizer production as an infrastructure subsector. <laughs> Madam Speaker, the task force on transaction cost set up by the Department of Commerce to identify and suggest ways to achieve the improvement in efficiency of our export process has completed its task. <coughs> 21 suggestions made by the task force have already been implemented. Action on remaining two will be taken in the next few months. This will mitigate transactions cost by about rupees 2,100 crore. To quicken the clearance of the cargo by customs authorities and further modernize the customs administration, I propose to introduce self-assessment in customs. Under this, import, under this, importers and exporters will themselves assess their duty liabilities while filing their declarations in the EDI system. The department will verify such assessments on a selective system-driven basis. <clears throat> there have been considerable difficulties in the sanction of refunds relating to the tax paid on services used for the export of goods. I propose to shortly introduce a scheme for the refund of these taxes on the lines of drawback of duties in a far more simplified and expeditious manner. A new scheme is also being introduced by which units in SEJs will be able to obtain the tax-free receipts of services wholly consumed within the zone and get their refunds in a much easier manner. Mega clusters have em employment and export potential. I propose to extend the mega cluster scheme for development of leather products. Seven mega leather uh, clusters would be set up during the year 2011-12. I also propose to include Jodhpur for the development of handicraft mega cluster. <clears throat> Madam Speaker, the generation and circulation of black money is an area of serious concern. To deal with the problem effectively, government has put into operation a five-fold strategy, which consists of joining the global crusade against black money, creating an appropriate legislative framework setting up of institutions for dealing with illicit funds, developing systems for implementation and implanting, imparting skills to the manpower for effective action. We secured membership of the Financial Action Task Force in June last year. This is an important initiative of G20 for anti-money laundering. We have also joined the Task Force on Financial Integrity and Economic Development Eurasian Group and Global Forum on Transparency and Exchange of Information for Tax Purposes. During the year, we have concluded discussions for 11 tax information exchange agreements, 13 new double taxation avoidance agreements, 
along with revision of the provisions of 10 existing double taxation avoidance agreement to effectively handle the increase in tax information and exchange and transfer pricing issues. Foreign tax divisions of the CBDT has been strengthened. A dedicated cell for exchange of information is being set up to work on this agenda. The amendment of our money laundering legislation in 2009 has significantly increased its scope and application. The number of cases registered under this law has increased from 50 between 2005 to 2008 to over 1,200 by January this year. The strength of the Enforcement Directorate has been increased threefold to deal effectively with the increased workload.